We are off. Today is day 205 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Free Code Camp. We are finishing up the final sections. We're going to try and do it in one major push. Fingers crossed we don't hit a speed bump on one of these upcoming items here at Free Code Camp, but ideally, if there is smooth sailing, we should be able to finish out this section. And on the books, we have loops, random stuff, and irregular expressions. I'm hoping to get through all of those and finally put an end to this JavaScript nightmare. Yeah, look at that, look at that. All of that has been dealt with. Good, good times. Okay, let's do a quick once over, run down, double check and we have everything we have. Mic audio, check, webcam, golden, chat on our phone. Little Kitty is sleeping in the hallway, so that's cool. And I think we're basically set with that. So good, good times. Let's do this. Okay. Kicking day 205 off from the top. Iterate with JavaScript for loops. You can run the same code multiple times by using a loop. The most common type of JavaScript loop is called a for loop because it runs for a specific number of times. For loops are declared with three optimal expressions. Is that? Ah, uh, three. We had the cursor covering and we just, we guessed, we guessed wrong, with three optional expressions separated by semicolons. For initialization, condition, final expression. The initial, the half, <laughs> yes, the initialization statement is executed one time only before the loop starts. It is typically used to define and set up your loop variable. The condition statement is evaluated at the beginning of the loop iteration and will continue as long as it evaluates to true when the condition is false. At the start of the iteration of the loop, the loop will stop executing. This means if a condition starts as false, your loop will never execute. The final expression is executed at the end of the loop iteration prior to the next condition check and is usually used to increment or decrement your loop counter. In the following example, we initialize the i equals zero and iterate while our i is less than five is true. We increment i by 1 in each loop iteration with i++ plus plus as our final expression. Variable r array for variable i equals i less than 5, i++ plus plus r array dot push i. Okay, our array will now contain 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're starting from 0. We're going to less than 5, up to less than 5, which would be 4, and it goes up by 1, 0 to 4. Ta-da! It works. Beautiful. Instructions. Use a for loop to... Do, 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 do. What are we doing? Use a for loop to work to push the values 1 through 5 onto my array. So for variable my array... That's what we'll be focused on. Let's drop down. We will set up a four. We will establish our conditions variable is I, not capital, I equals zero, semicolon, I less than six, no, 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 less than six, semicolon, and I++. plus plus. Okay. Uh, what else do we need from there? Ah, we need curly braces, and it needs to do something, which will be my array dot push, ideally. Uh, something... Pushing I. 
pushing I. <clears throat> okay. We should, no, no, bad Steven, bad Steven. We were looking at this as our example. We caught ourselves on six, which is good because we're trying to go to five, but we need to be starting with one. D -d 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 -d. Oh, you slimy th mm -hmm. bastard. Uh, cut. My, my bad, my mistake. They wanted only change code below this line. There we go. <clears throat> Run test. Cranked it up to 11. Awesome. Technically, we only made it to 5. 1 through 5, more specifically. Uh, iterate odd numbers with a for loop. For loops don't have to iterate one at a time. By changing our final expression, we can count by even numbers. While well, we start i equals 0, and a loop i less than 10 will increment i by 2, each loop with i plus equals 2. Variable our array for i equals 0, i less than 10, i plus equals 2, pushing i. Our array will now contain 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Let's change our initialization so we can count by odd numbers. Instructions. Push the odd numbers 1 through 9 to my array using the for loop. Same song and dance. Now we know. Do below the line. We will do for condition stuff variable i. Good evening, tiny cat. How are you doing? Yes, yes. See, the desk is mostly clean, so now you don't have as much stuff to knock over. Pretty nice, huh? Try not to right click and backspace or, uh, load the, the previous page, that'd be super awesome. Guess what? Got your tail. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Needed to get that out of the way. Um, so now that all the important things have been dealt with regarding the cat, let's go ahead and do I equals zero. Mm, semicolon followed by I less than 10 because we want 9 included although yeah we'd be fine i i kind of want to do i less than 11 because we're counting odd numbers and they did i less than 10 to count even i know we'd still get 9 either way using 10 or 11 but it just in my mind I feel like, death, we did zero again. One. You know, crazy person's choice. Damn, it's so hard to figure out what I should do. I mean, we could do less than or equal to, and then we'd be able to use nine. But, ah, uh, choices. Choices. Let's do 11. Let's do 11. Because we can. We really don't have a better reason. Um... Yeah, aside from our insanity. So, i less than 11, semicolon, i plus equals d. Except this is the same. No, no, two out of three are different. But then again, if we make this 10, two out of three are now the same. Ooh. That's a toughie. Tradition versus protocol. Hmm. Damn. Can we do ten and a half? I know it doesn't matter at all. Doesn't matter at all. But when you're insane, you can feel it. It makes my soul feel itchy. Death. Um, what are we doing? We are doing my array dot push curly nonsense i semicolon we'll leave it at that we'll leave it at that ta-da your powers combined i think 10 and 2 were the right choice well 10 was the right choice 11 was just so much more interesting you know what we can justify it 
because look, we even have no, 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 we we can't. Oh, everything I'm a crazy, crazy person. See, look, this is fun because there's two ones, a one here and a one there, and then they're separated from the two by a zero. It's kind of like a balance beam, so that can be two. And then you've got a zero in between and then a two here. So technically it balances out. If we were to do 11, that'd be three and two. And then the universe would be lopsided. Okay, well, I think that was a bit of an overshare on our insanity. So let's run that, move on to the next thing. The world rejoices? No, only Steven rejoices. Yes, good, good. Let the insanity consume you. Uh, what are we looking for? Count backwards with a for loop. A for loop can also count backwards so long as we can define the right conditions. In order to count backwards by twos, we'll need to change our initialization condition and final expression. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Our initialization condition and our final expression. Hey, Topher! How you doing, man? Hopefully, hopefully you're, oh, uh, what is it? God, is it Monday or Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Hopefully your 11 minutes of this particular Tuesday have been better than your last 24 hours of Monday. I don't know if that's a thing. Good, good. But hopefully you're doing awesome, uh, aside from however the days went and or are going. But uh, good to see you. Good to have you. We are nearing the end, just an FYI, uh, the end of the, the basic JavaScript stuff which is cool because finally, I'm excited, they go over regular expressions here at Free Code Camp. So that's cool. I finally, finally get to see, taste, and learn about said regular expressions. So yeah, good, good times. Uh, we just got to get through the loopiness and then some of the random numbery stuff and then regular expressions. Yeah, cool. All right, uh, what were we doing? Something about odd numbers? No, no, no. Uh, Topher, doing well. Been a while since I caught your late-ass stream. <laughs> yeah, it has been needlessly late. We've been pretty consistent, not starting any earlier than 11.57 for like the last week and a half. So, not good. Not good. We gotta work on that. I think we only had one stream a few days ago, and... Dread, was it Dreadsteed? Dreadsteel? I always forget. It's either Dreadsteed or Dreadsteel. It's Dreadsteel. Dreadsteed. Fuck. Dread was here. Anyways, good, good times. But yeah, been been a while since since you've swung by. But we've been making progress. Slowly. But it's still been there. Uh, any hooser. What are we looking for? Instruction-y things? No, not yet array -y stuff up here initialization condition and final expression we'll start i equals 10 and loop while i is greater than is no 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 okay totally off topic uh let's let's don't mind me don't mind me because i'm thinking of it hopefully your breath of the wild uh topher i still catch the vod the next day oh yeah, that's cool. Tons of fun. Awesome. Good to know. Uh, also good to know is, oh god, I lost one. Let's back out to OBS. I've only got a few of them, the Amiibos for Breath of the Wild, but I came across these. Amiibo cards for Breath of the Wild, huh? Yeah, way cheaper, and there's a whole, there's a whole flock of them. Look at this. It's fantastic. I recommend everyone should get one or all of them. They're super cheap on like Etsy or Amazon or eBay. Yeah, they're they're spectacular. So uh, that's that's my two cents on that. But they work just the same as the Amiibo cards. We've been Breath of the Wilding hard pretty recently back in it since they did the DLC. So that's that's my recommendation to anyone and everyone. We've got a flock of the actual amiibos ourselves but uh those are those are way more easy to use anywho that's all let's let's jump back to the free code camp issues 
uh, good, good times. So, quick, quick little side share. Uh, we are doing stuff with the loop. We'll start at i equals 10 and loop while i is greater than 0. We'll decrement i by 2 each loop with i less than or equal to 2. Variable array for i equals 10, i greater than 0, i less than or equal to. Okay, our array will now contain 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. So we're counting down, that's all. Uh, do, 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 do. Topher, I moved on from Breath of the Wild for now. I've been playing Fortnite. Ah, gotcha. See, I'm still... I, I, I have yet to get a Switch. I've been playing Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. So, Switches have been... Don't mind me. There's a cat attacking the carpet or something. Like a plastic bag. Oh. Hey. Hey, tiny cat. Yeah, you. Tiny cat's attacking a napkin on the floor, so she's just shredding it to pieces. How's Fortnite going? I heard Fortnite was somewhat interesting, which is generally positive, I'd hope. Oh, Fortnite isn't on. I thought, what am I thinking of? God. My life for the last 205 days has been Breath of the Wild and, and this stream, so no point, no. We're going to Google it. We're going to Google it because we can, although Fortnite ain't going to come up with exactly Fortnite. <laughs> ah, Fortnite, right. That's a thing. Tons of fun. Good thing we're not getting... Fortnite is amazing, and you can play it on your Mac. Well, look at that. Take back the world. I'd be down to take back the world. Tons of fun. All right, well, good times. Epic games. They make all kinds of stuff. The Unreal Engine. Good, good. All right. And Infinity Blade. That's why. Although I only did the first two Infinity Blades on, on my phone. All right. Closing out of that. Good to know. Uh, Topher, Epic Games makes it. Gotcha. Yep, that is, that is a thing. We just... We saw that. Good. We are all on the same Epic Games... Wavelength. Speaking of being on the same page, what am I doing? Counting down from 10. That's all I need to do. Count down from 10. Uh, if you end up getting it, you'll have to add me so we can play. Noted. Noted. I'm still trying to balance all of the... Any and all free time is still trying to figure out how to keep this whole BDX Inc. thing going and learning to code. I need to add, I've been waiting to do the, I kind of ranted about it in yesterday's stream. I've been waiting to do those Udemy videos. The uh, I don't know how many videos. Wasn't it like 85 videos or something like that? I was waiting till I finished my next sort of intro to javascript course at some other site free code camp is that second some other site so after we knock out this i'm excited <laughs> to get back to code wars and then dive into those udemy videos so i know those are going to start eating up a lot of my free time but uh yeah good good times but yes anything Anything that you're taking part in that I add, we will be sure to add Mr. Topher Gates to our roster. Just like Code Wars. Just like Code Wars. Speaking of just like Code Wars and making progress, 
we are looking for changing something, initialization, and final expression. So we can count backwards by twos and odd numbers. Instructions. Push the odd numbers from 9 through 1 to my array using the for loop. Let's set up our for loop, and then we will do that. For parentheses stuff. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm still in the midst of saving up for a better computer because... I can't even stream, like if I were to play a video, like even a trailer or YouTube clip or anything, even the playback of the video is extremely choppy. So I'm still concerned about trying to play games on my old Mac Mini and stream. I just think it's going to be like Lagfest 2017 and just all kinds of awful. Dropped frames. Just... A genuine nightmare so I'm concerned because I thought about doing like there's they've got all the emulator websites I thought about getting a Raspberry Pi to make an emulator but I know my computer can't even handle taking that feed and then sending that out so I thought about playing on the sites but I can't even play back a, a video so it's uh, kind of brutal uh, is that your computer or your internet I ah, it's the internet's actually decent. Um, what is it? I'm pushing like 10, 12 megabits out, and Twitch only receives since I'm not partnered. I think it maxes out at, what is it? Oh, you know what? I'm thinking of the cap. The They have a cap for the audio level or the audio quality, um, but I'm just doing the regular, what is it, two and a half? 2,500 kilobits? Is that it for Twitch? Since people can't choose the source. I did have it at 3,000 initially, but I dropped it down to 2. But no, as far as all the receiving stuff on my end, um, it's definitely my computer. Because I have access to other people's laptops and stuff that have better equipment have had access to better people's laptops because I tried my Elgato HD60S. I wasn't sure if it was my computer or if it was the capture card that was sucking. Um, and it, it was definitely my computer. Performed way better on a couple other machines. I tried it on two, three other computers. All of them did better. Uh, Higher-end MacBook Pros, and those handled them far better than my archaic Mac Mini Um She's a fighter. Uh, 1,200 to 15 out is fine for streaming. I assume you're at 500, 100 down. Uh, yeah, I'm at like 68, 70 for download. So not too bad. Enough for multiple devices. And also when I, just as fun facts information, we've got my phone the lady's phone, her laptop, and other stuff, we actually kill Wi-Fi when I go to do the stream. So I kill the Wi-Fi on my phone, her phone. Uh, even when she goes to play Sims when I'm streaming, she'll kill the Wi-Fi on her laptop, so there's a lot less drain. And I've got my Mac Mini hardwired, so anything and everything we can do to try and maximize what, what internet feed utilize what internet we have for the stream i try and take advantage of but uh yeah no just the general lagginess is is really from my computer it just she struggles she's old but she's a fighter but hopefully i think within the next six four to six months fingers crossed i might be getting a new rig so you know what let's try again yeah why not this is just one long uh, one long tangent. Last time their site really struggled to load. Graphics. Zotac. So Zotac makes graphics cards, but they also do mini PCs. And they've got pretty damn good ones. Because it's just what I need. There's a, a balance of... I've got very limited desk space. Just my whole situation. The weird camera setup. The fact that there's another human in the room. 
you know, probably like half the time and awful timing. Like there's a lot of compromising going on here. Um, yeah, the, the internet shutting devices off. So we're, it's making it work. So another issue is the size of the computers. So I need a freakishly small computer. Again, my Mac Mini is perfect because that's about as big of a machine as I can handle. There's no space underneath the desk. We've, yeah, it, it, anywho. Um, so there was the, uh, they've offered kit computers um, with the processor. Full, not full size, but uh, legitimate non-laptop graphics cards. So 1070, 1080, and uh, God, what else? Oh, and then it's it's choose your own uh, storage, which is so awesome. So there's the 1070 and then the uh, 1080. Kind of tie between the two. I'm leaning towards the 1080. 1070 is about the same size as the Mac Mini right now. And it's got just about everything I need. Uh, for all the USB 3 goodness, which is the Elgato capture card uses, and some other fun stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a quite... Do they have... Oh, they don't have an exploded view. They do on the 1080, though. The 1080, though, is interesting because it's like double the height, but it has liquid cooling, which helps cut down on the noise because we've mentioned it before, my Mac Mini... It sounds like a Black Hawk helicopter trying to take off, and it's just ridiculous. So, uh, they should have the exploded view. They don't. Those bastards. They do on Amazon, but that's okay. That's that's left for another day. So, the 1080K is what I'm looking at. I think that's the next rig I'm going to end up with. Fingers crossed. It'll just take some time to save up for that but I think it's going to be worth it. And then I should be set for a while. Okay, speaking of being set for a while, let's get this particular item over with. All we have to do is count backwards, you know? You try and do one thing, and so many other interesting topics come up. Do, 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 something about a nine? Hmm... The 1070 goes for, I believe it's 1200, and that's in a 7th gen Core i5 with a 1070. Um, and that's got just regular air cooling. And then it has an SSD slot. Uh, and in M.2, which can handle the newer NVMe, NVMe cards, so you can do both, and I would probably get an NVMe, um, yeah, storage card, because Samsung just came out with some new ones for their NVMe-enabled ones, so that would be awesome. Might do Evo or Pro, not too sure. Uh, and I'm not sure if I would do the two and a half inch drive. I probably would just for the extra storage, but I, I kind of like the idea of only running off an NVMe, um, the new, the M.2 NVMe cards. Uh, and then the, the 1080 kit, they do have one, they, they've got the kit versions and then the plus models, which have like a 120 gig hard drive pre-installed, but F that noise, I'd rather just get the kit and then go out and source my own drives that are bitching because uh yeah thug life um but the 1080 one is a seventh gen core i7 and the 1080 of course and then same thing uh the two and a half inch drive i think three and a half inch but it either way it'd be ssd and then the m.2 slot with liquid cooling and you know what we're gonna do it we're gonna do it zotac 1080k Amazon. Um, I think that's 1800, so 1200 and 1800. E something. 
Ian something or other. Yeah, this guy. Boah, not 2100. F that noise. Oh, hard drive, no RAM. There we go. It was, oh, they raised it 80 bucks. It was, uh, 17.99, like, a month ago. So, it kind of fluctuates around there, but they've got the exploded view. Yeah, this guy. Ta-da, dee 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 So, liquid cooling. How fun is that? For both the graphics card, they've got a block on the processor and the graphics card for liquid cooling. So for such a small machine, I'm telling you, it's a thing. People do that. Versus the 1070 is the i5. It works. I mean, it's still there. Nothing wrong with that. Air cooled. Uh, I think it's probably got better air management with the dual fans than the whatever the hell the Mac Mini's got going on from a couple years ago. But yeah, so 1080 though. That's what I've got my money on. Hopefully, fingers crossed, when in Rome. And I'd probably wait until the price drops back down to seventeen ninety nine. If it doesn't go, or if it goes cheaper, but that's enough about Steven, right? Let's do this. Let's do this. For variable i, that's not an i, equals something about something 10 semicolon. <laughs> i is greater than. Zero, because we're counting down, so it will stop as long as it's greater than zero. Then semicolon. Then we're doing i minus equals something, two. Okay. And then let's push this onto our stuff. Uh, Something. Um, all right. That's as much as I pay, uh, Topher. That's as much as I paid for my MacBook Pro. A little more, actually. The twelve hundred or the eighteen hundred could be both. Because I just I was looking. The other thing I was trying to figure out uh, was now that we're tinkering with coding, is I'd love to be able to stream directly from like an iPad. I think that would be extremely handy and now that they added the live stream ability from the ipad well to the app itself whether you're on your phone or an app it seemed more viable because the new ipad pro the second gen one seems more like a computer than it ever has been especially compared to like the microsoft surface and and stuff like that but the functionality the pencil is uh tons of fun so i was trying to figure out if i do a new Mac, like a MacBook Pro, but I don't, I'm not mobile. I'm here. It's been 205 days and I'm still, still in this room. I just, I don't, I don't move. I don't do that. So, um, yeah, it, it, I can, I can see situations and it's one of those things where it's better to be safe than sorry. If you can see yourself moving a lot, definitely get the laptop. But I've managed with a Mac Mini for, for so long, so, uh, and non-laptop life. I did have an iPad for quite a few years, and I'd usually update, like, once every two years, but it's been probably two or three years since I've had an iPad. And I've been waiting for them to update the iPad Pros, the 13-inch models, and now the new second-gen ones look tons of fun. And the... The Zotac machines only came out, I think, last year. It was like mid to early last year. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty new device. I mean, those cards aren't that old anyways. And, and they've got the new 7th gen. They do have older ones, uh, which are more affordable, of course. They've got a whole flock of those Zotac mini PCs. 
uh, with like the sixth generation Intel chips, and I think even the fifth generation ones. But I was looking for the new seventh gen chip uh, with the current graphics card, especially if I'm doing this kind of stuff. I kind of want to commit and go for it. And again, with my obscure environment restrictions, we'll call it, and needs, it uh, was basically the perfect fit. So, yeah, good times. Uh, 1800 I paid 1600 for my MacBook. Uh, mid-2016 model, or mid-2015, I move around the house all day with it. It's glorious. Yeah, see, I mean, that that's, that's an obvious choice. And, again, a MacBook Pro, that's what I tried the, uh, capture, the Elgato HD 60S, the capture card I have, and it was basically a top-of-the-line spec'd-out MacBook Pro for either late 2015 or mid 2016 and it functioned basically flawlessly it was a little buggy because it was still mac and it's really more primed for uh windows but overall it was it was pretty good anywho good good times uh something about pushing dot push something my array dot push. That was like a super tangent. We covered a lot of stuff in that. Not gonna lie, kind of fun. It's been a while since we've had a good, good long tangent where we go searching for crap. Did we miss something? We totally missed something. Should equal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, let's do 11. And run. Hold the phone. Sit, Stephen. Sit. Why am I missing something? When in Rome, push the odd numbers from 9 through 1. Hmm. We have 10 to 0 minus 2. That spits out 10 blank blank. Oh, it starts at 9. It starts at 9. Okay. See, it cuts off here for 0 because it'll end at 1, and I was getting confused, but it starts at 9. Typical. Typical always confused Stephen. uh hyper combo finished yes good good hyper combo definitely finished all right don't mind me some phone issues what's the, uh yes tan i agree toe for tangents are fun good good okay so phone issues and stuff that is awesome Okay, okay, and we're back. Crisis averted. <clears throat> so let's let's keep forging ahead, shall we? We are so close. Let's get through this loopy hell, deal with the random numbers, and finally figure out how the hell a regular expression functions. Go time. A common task in JavaScript is to iterate through the contents of an array. One way to do this is with a for loop. This code will output each element of the array, array to the console, variable array, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, for variable, 0, i less than array length, increment i by 1, console log array i. Remember that arrays have zero base numbering, which means the last index of the array is length minus 1. Our condition for this loop is i less than array dot length, which stops when i is at a length less than 1. <clears throat> instructions declare and initialize a variable total to zero total to zero so we should be doing this total zero for hours <clears throat> use a for loop to add the value of each element of the my array to the total 
something that rhymes with something. Let's just hope for the best that this works out. So variable total equals zero. And then we are setting up a for loop. <clears throat> for parentheses variable i equals where are we starting from? Six, zero, nine, ten, eleven. Start with zero. Oh, because we're referencing the array. I was like, wait a second, that's a nine. That's a huge gap. There's eight pieces missing. No, 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 there's not eight pieces missing. Zero is two, and one will be three. Ta-da. So array dot length, that makes sense, and then I plus plus. So <clears throat> from here, I equals zero semicolon I something or other. I less than my array, my arg to be exact dot length semicolon I plus plus minus minus are we counting up or down we're counting up with some curly braces followed by a semicolon and some plus equals so our our something total equals plus equals my array I. Interesting. My array I. So is that real? And let's fix that. That's not a proper semicolon. That is, though. Does that really give... Oh, God. We did something wrong. There's... Oh, no. My array length. Bad, Steven. We forgot to do something, and there was... There was frustration. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so can we... Do we have to reset the page? Let's just copy this. We're going to reset the page just for fun, because we can. Ta-da! And reset code. Slightly. There we go. Variable total equals zero semicolon, followed by i less than my array dot length. That's better. Run test. Spool up the FTL drive. <sighs> Barely made it out of the woods on that one. Nesting for four loops. No, no, no. Nesting for four loops? Not two fours. One four. Un four. Nesting four loops. That's what we're looking for. If you have a multi-dimensional array, you can use the same logic as the prior waypoint to loop through both the array and any subarrays. Here's an example. Var variable array. First one, one, two. Second one, three, four. Third, five, six. For variable, i equals zero. i dot array dot length. i i for variable j equals zero. Oh, you just do it again. You just stack the crap out of them. For variable j equals zero, j less than uh, array dot, no, array i dot length. That's so interesting. You can see it. j plus plus, console log, array i, j. Yeah, look at that. That's so cool. Right? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe people don't care. I think that's fascinating. That's, I, I just want to see, I, obviously anyone could sign up for a computer science course or whatever, computer programming major, but does the class as a whole in the early introductory courses, when people see this, is there like a unanimous, oh, that's shocking kind of moment? No, no one's, the, the whole community is not impressed by this? Probably not. 
Not unless they're a bunch of simpletons like myself, I suppose. Anywho, I think it's neat. What are we doing? This outputs each sub-element in array one at a time. Note that for the inner loop, we are checking the dot length of array i, since array i is itself an array. Nested loops generally confuse people. I think it's fascinating. I mean, but then again, I'm also perma-confused, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, being students, at least. Yeah, I can see that. I can easily see people getting pissed at this. Especially if they're like, I don't know what situation they would need to be forced into taking a computer programming course, but it could happen. But if they were just trying to take that course to meet one of their credit necessities, requirements, computer programming might be not so enjoyable. But after 205 days of nonsense, this, this is bitching. This is what a good time looks like here on our stream. Yeah. We've had to lower our standards for a good time <laughs> by a lot, though, <laughs> over the last 200 plus days. Uh, instructions. Modify function. Multiply all so that it multiplies the product variable by each number in the subarray of R. I... I see this. I know that I'm going to be using two for loops in something. But what's actually going down? Function multiply all array variable product equals one. Only change the code be below this line. Only change the code above this line. Modify values below to set your code. Interesting. So what am I, what part of this am I actually setting up? Why do they only have one line available for us? I'm sure we can expand upon that. Modify function, multiply all, so that it multiplies the product variable. The product variable, okay, by each number in the subarrays, in the subarrays, of array so we're setting up this whole nested for loop thing that's what's going down yet again another case here on free code camp of monkey see monkey do all right so we're just gonna make it work <clears throat> four plus it's just probably good practice four i Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, see, this is why we're typing it out. Variable i equals zero, semicolon, i less than array i or array, just array, just array dot length. Even following along, I can still get confused. Pretty impressive. Again, if I were to have a superpower, it would be confusion. Not helpful to others, just detrimental to myself. <laughs> Curly stuff. And we would begin our next for loop. I just think that's so cool. We could go on and on. We could go like eight levels deep with this. I don't know what one would produce by going eight levels deep with a for loop. And I'm sure at some point it would be easier to do like a switch statement type thing. There's got to be a simpler way to do this for many, many levels, multiple arrays. But in the meantime, I would do just a bunch of these basic ones. I was the kid in like, what was it, first or second grade? Probably first grade when they were teaching uh, multiplication, I was determined to just, that I wasn't going to need to multiply. I was the one who was going to be like, they showed six times, or, you know, four times 11, and then showing how to work out the math. 
I was the kid who wrote 4 plus 4 plus 4 11 times and just did the math that way. I was like, no, there's no need to learn how to do that. That's crazy talk. Just do it the simple way, the way that you previously knew, for way longer. Fortunately, that changed, but I vividly remember doing that. Struggling. Yeah, the hard road. Not good. Not good at all. After, after like the fourth or fifth problem, I could see that I was not going to win that battle. Variable I, no, not I, variable J equals zero, semicolon, J less than, now we have array I from the one above. And see, I, very cool. And then dot length, semicolon with I, no, J plus plus, J plus plus, J plus plus, and then curly stuff. And here's where we actually get to do something. So, is all the, they didn't want just console log, they wanted us to actually do something with it modify the function multiply all so that it multiplies the product variable by each number in the subarray so okay so this is very very similar to the last one so instead of whatever it was plus equals something 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 now it will be product times equals is that a thing god i hope so that's how i'm envisioning it um all of that noise so it would be times equals uh my array no not my array this is multiply all i'm gonna copy it just for to avoid typos and Mass confusion. Speaking of mass confusion, Topher Gates, mass confusion would be a good superpower if your own confusion could affect people around you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my confusion might be contagious. <laughs> I could see that happening. Uh, multiply all dot push, not push. Damn it, why can't we remember exactly what we did on the last one? It was multiply all. Damn. It saves it. We're going to peek back at the last one. Rookie mistake. What a noob. Iterate through, blah, blah, blah. It was total plus, oh, it was just my array i, so that would be my it would be multiply all i j that's what it would be see that so it would be multiply all i and then j oh not inside of it but holy hell what is happening i and then j no not curly j that's what we're looking for. Ta-da! Dee 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 dee. No, not no. Oh, ooh. It got bad. It got real bad. Um. That's okay. That's okay. Monkey see, monkey do can easily be altered. So we're looking to take this. and do something with it. Hold on, there's just a, a minor difference that needs to be dealt with. Fuck. Hmm. I'm actually not sure what I'm missing. 
functional multiply array variable product one. They supplied us with that. Only change the code below this line. It started off with only one space, but I think we were supposed to put all of this noise in. Again, it was building off the last activity. Very similar with our end result, at least I would hope. It could be the multiplication stuff here. I think that might be f***ing things up quite a bit. And then only change code above this line. So this stays the same. And then modify the values below to test your code. I don't actually think I need to change anything. I know I could modify it, but I don't think I need to. We really haven't done any of that stuff before. Type error cannot read the property of zero undefined. Somehow, for some reason, they hate our zero that we've introduced. That I do O instead of zero? That's an O. That's a zero. I don't see any immediate error codes to the left. I just, I think this is mostly good. Maybe it's here, product. Maybe it's the one. Modify function multiply all so that it multiplies the product variable, so multiplies product, by each number in the subarrays of R. Maybe it has to do with the fact that it's I and J. Maybe they just need J. But I feel like we need I to reference J. Let's see what's happening. Um, Topher Gates. Problem is on line 7. Uh, okay, so that is here. Problem is on line 7. Multiply all is a function. Multiply all is a function, not an array. Multiply all is a function, not an array. Ah. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Fascinating. So, hold on. Hold the phone. Um. So, where is the array we will be working with? See, like this guy, variable, array, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Oh, multiply all is, that's like the specific thing. That is the function. My bad, my bad, mega idiot. I should be putting in just array. See, array is here. I forgot it's the label thing again. I am looking to take a specific thing like multiply array and shove it into the function. The function is just the instructions, just the instructions. Array is what we're looking for. Ta-da, hopefully. And yeah, there we go. See, see, they said you rock. Really, they meant to say Topher rocks. That's what's going on. Uh, the one multiply all is a function, not an array. The one you were looping through. Yes, yeah, gotcha. See, Topher fixed it. Topher saves the day yet again. Day 205, saved by Topher. Okay. How many more loopy ones before we get to the random numbers? We've got one more loop, iterate with the, this one, iterate with JavaScript while loops, then we have profile lookup, and then we've got three random numbers and four things of regular, no, three things of regular, no, four regular expressions. Very cool. Tons of fun. Okay. Forging ahead. That was close. You can run the same code multiple times by using a loop. Another type of code, I don't know, another type of JavaScript loop is called a while loop because it runs while a specific condition is true and stops once that condition is no longer true. Variable our array, empty, 
variable i equals 0 while i is less than 5, our array dot push i, i plus plus. Let's try getting a while loop to work by pushing values to an array. Instructions. Push the numbers 0 through 4 to my array using the while loop. Push the numbers 0 to 4 using a while loop. Okay, okay, here we go. Our array, my array, variable i equals 0, semicolon, while parentheses i less than 4, no, 5, because we want 4, so 5 is what we're going to stick with. We're going to end up with curly stuff, followed by something, my array dot push, my array dot push, curly stuff, I. Yes, with a semicolon, followed by I plus plus. So we're building out a for loop still, but it's just kind of spread out downhill. Sort of. Instead of for, it's while. We have our push. And that's what it's doing. So we set up our variable. It does this condition while that's true. Then it has what it will be spitting out or doing, the action of it. And then we indicate how it will be going about doing that. Well, not really how, but, you know, the I++ plus plus or minus minus whatnot. Okay. Oh, and again, look at that. Only change code below this line. Fan. Fantastic. Let's copy this, all of our hard work. Beautiful. Okay. How's that? And semicolon. Ta-da! Fire away. Run test. Why do they hate us? Why do they insist on being frustrated? Oh, it was my array. They've been using my... No, 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 no. They've technically, they've either been using my array, array, or, or they've been using just the lowercase r. I was confusing the two and tried to smash them together into this, but that's not a thing. Let's try that on for size, shall we? Boom. Coding spree. It's a slow one. And it's been painful, but we've done it. Profile lookup. We have an array of objects representing different people on our contacts list. A lookup profile function that takes first name and a property, prop, as an argument has been pre-written for you. The function should check if first name is an actual contact's first name and the given prop is a property of that contact. Okay, if both are true, then return the value of that property. If the first name doesn't correspond to any contacts, then return no such contact. If the prop does not correspond to any valid properties, then return no such property. Hmm. Why do I feel like they're testing us? I feel like I'm going to tragically destroy all of this. I really wanted to finish all of the JavaScript stuff, today, but I feel like this is going to turn into a nightmare, and then I won't be finishing this stuff until tomorrow, which I really don't want it to be the case. Let's see how profile lookup goes. If this ends in tears, then that may be the end of it. We may have bitten off more than we can chew, but fingers crossed we can actually make it through all this noise. All right. <clears throat> Same song and dance. Nothing's different. Everything's great. So they've set stuff up. Only change code below this line. Only change code above this line. And then change these values to test. Everything here is fine. 
Everything here is also cool. So all we're doing is setting up a wow statement, I believe. I think. Hopefully. Um, look up profile function that takes first name. Yeah, function, look up profile, first name, prop. The function should check if the first name is an actual contact's first name and the given prop is a property. I feel like we're stacking things. I feel like this is an if statement and the dot is it has own property. I think that's what it is. If both are true, so that's an if state with an and, or a while with an and. For loop? It's already falling apart. I don't even know how to think about this one. If a first name doesn't correspond to any of the contacts, then return no such contacts. If prop doesn't correspond to any valid properties, then use then return no such property. Okay, okay. And I only remember this because they did it for two other ones. They used a switch statement and an if statement. They used a switch statement for the given situ uh, for the different given scenarios, and then they used an if statement to gauge the different switch cases, which was clever. But I don't know if I should be doing that in this. All of this is awful. We're just going to start coding stuff. Because uh, then we can always check, get a hint. So, when in Rome, I feel like we should be using a while statement. So we're going to try doing that. Or variable first name. That's already a dumb idea. Uh, variable contact. Now that's also dumb. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. The last one. <laughs> no. So that's the array. So that was that's contact. Contact is my array. I'm creating a variable. While that variable is true, as we go through, we're going to be verifying things, and we're going to iterate through one at a time. We are going to steal this just as a backup case for now. But ideally, in my mind, I can see variable i being used for something. I don't think that fits here. None of this feels good. I don't think it's a while loop. I think it's a for loop. For um, variable i equals zero, just for starters. i contacts dot length. Uh, I'm not too sure. Contacts dot length for starters. Uh, I plus plus might as well be good enough. <clears throat> um, damn, where'd it go? I plus plus. I could see having the second one. No, not for likes. So that's one thing. And then two. So you'd have a second one. Copy for J. This is like the other one. 
contacts I and J. And in here, we'd actually be verifying things, weighing if it has, I don't remember what it is, but it's something about a, like, dot has own property? I forget what that thing is called. Property. That's not right. But anywho, um, ah, Topher. Loop through the array of contacts. Check if the first name matches. If it does, check if the prop exists and return the value. Oh, no need for the nested loops here. You don't have a multi-dimensional array. Oh, I thought all of these were its own little array. My bad. My bad. I thought it was first contact and all their noise and then so forth and such and such, but I read that wrong. Uh, so let's get rid of this. And we can get rid of... No. Semicolon. Maybe? Hmm. Yeah. Contacts. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is it contacts that we're looking up? Or is it first name? I think it's... F and it's not length. Is it length? Loop through the array of contacts. Okay, yeah, yeah, no. Loop through the array of contacts. Contacts.length. It will go through all of them. Loop through contacts dot length. Well, it's going to be receiving first name and prop. Loop through all first names? Why is it when I go to do something, it all falls apart? Death. <clears throat> okay, hold on. Don't mind me. Loop through the array of contact. Like, when I read it, I can see it in my head. Check if the first name matches. If first name is equivalent to contacts I eh? yeah if 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 first name is equivalent to contacts I then do this guy else not else um else if eh, just focus on the first name thing do something return Return. Check if the name matches. If it does. Oh no, if it does, then check prop. Then, then check prop. Then, um, if blankety blank, then check. So that'd be another if statement. If, bastards, if. Hmm. Something's off, but I feel like we're slowly getting close. We're scratching the surface. If prop is equivalent to what, though? So I think I've got my variables messed up because I've only got one variable for both. No, for uh, contacts. No, 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 contacts is both. I is 
both first name and props? Yeah. Because that's what contacts is. First name and a property of sorts. So... From there, it would be the same song and dance again. I want to say I feel like I should have set something else up and have like a J involved. Or it's some iteration of I. Oh, what's happening? Okay, contacts I is close, but it will only be the object at the current array index. You need to check the first name property of the current object. Contacts I is close. You need to check the first name property property oh so that would be um like literally contacts dot first name is that weird is that bad because then if that's the case that would make sense because then i would do like contacts dot prop down here but i don't know if they're gonna like that Death, death. Yeah, that feels wrong. It feels wrong. There's not a not a good feeling about that. Ah, V Snake two thousand. No, good, good. Thank you for the confirmation, V Snake. Much appreciated. Whoa, whoa, wait. Uh, uh, uh. Go, go, Solomon. Try to use four of four contacts. Of contacts? I I want to believe you, Go Salmon. Contacts I dot first name. Damn. Damn. Uh so close. Not there, not there. As it all falls apart. Contacts I dot first name. Fascinating. Okay. Good, good. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so from here, I should I should regroup. So how much of this do I have currently? Uh, lookup profile function takes first name and property prob as an argument pre-written. Yeah, contacts. Lookup first name and prop. Super cool. The function should check if the first name is an actual contact's first name. The function should check if the contact's name, first name, is an actual first name in the contacts. Okay. And the given property is a property of that contact. So now we need to identify if this prop is tied to this contact. That's the next step. And then if both are true, then return the value of that property. Okay, so then we'd actually be, uh, be returning, I think, dot prop, if I'm not mistaken. So now we just have to do contacts i... Rinse and repeat I dot prop. And then from there, some curly nonsense, which we already have. Let's get rid of the else elsiness. And then return. I want to say that we could just return contacts.prop. Unmatched thing. Yeah, unmatched thing. So that's the opening. Parentheses. Opening curly nonsense. Needs a closing curly nonsense. Th 
Ta-da. dee 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 Fingers crossed. And I did something wrong, but that's okay. Okay, okay, wait, no pro- Ah, uh, yes, yes, my bad, my bad. There is no prop. Uh, so, hold on, what's going down? Uh, try to use a four of, four contacts. Contacts I, first name. Go Salmon. Google MDM for of uh, Mozilla Developer Network. Yeah, for of. Okay, Google it. Uh, it's a different way to iterate through an object, an array of objects. It's a little more clear. Topher. Now you just need to check if prop exists. Contacts I prop will fail. However, um, go Salmon to check the contact. See if it has a property. The dot has own. Didn't we type that? Oh, we deleted our dot has own property method from somewhere. So dot. Let's do. Well, actually, we should probably have it up here. Um, dot has own property. Why is it green now? We typed in has own property, but oh, you know why? Okay, so before, don't mind me. I was looking for the, the confirmation. I just typed it out and had it floating around somewhere like this, and it was all white earlier. So I got rid of it because I thought I typed it in wrong. My bad. That's what was going down. So um, good, good. So do, 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 Googling stuff. Uh, check if prop exists. I prop will fail. Uh, Go Salmon to check if the contact to check the contact see if it has a property. Uh, Vsnake two thousand. There is no prop in your contacts array. Noted. That is that is a very good point. Go Salmon. Use the method dot has own property. Topher. That okay. So good. We are checking things. Has own property. So then return. I guess from here we would just return prop because they said return the. That, oh, return the value of that prop. Okay, so if I want to return the value of that prop, then I will need contacts.i. Actually, it would be contacts.i something. How would I return? all of that because if contacts i first name is going to bring us that of whichever given property but if i wanted all of them for any specific one it would be hold on hold the phone hold the phone um um i can almost Taste it. It would, uh, let me at least get the contacts I bit in there. Contacts I. Contacts I. What would I do for prop? What would I do for prop? I, I want to just do this, but I know that doesn't work. So. And I know I can't hard code it, like, number specifically. death what would i put oh had topher has own property is a method so it should take a value really has own by has own property will return something it doesn't just check true or false that's actually going to return like their the dude's phone number or the gal's phone number sherlock's phone number sure Actually, I'm probably doing it incorrectly. I think I'm just doomed in general. Remember, you can access a property of an object using bracket. Oh, because there's spaces. There's there's spaces. If it has a space, you can't um, stuff. No, uh, if it has a space, you should use bracket notation. If it has a space, you should use bracket notation.
God, and I'm drawing a blank already on... Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Do, do, do. We were just using bracket notation yesterday. Give me one, give me ten. Dun, 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 dun. Crazy person choice. Okay, testing, blah, blah, blah. Next. And entree brings out that. So we are just looking for Can I tack can I tack on multiples? See like this one was player 16 and they just did player number. Damn. I know I'm so close. It's me, it's my confusion. Uh, what, uh, what's going on? Okay. Remember you can access, wait, has own property as a method, so it should take a value. Remember you can access a property of an object using bracket notation as well. You should try to write more functional code. Ah, uh, as in have it do more, but not just so for an iffy, less iffy code things that are actually going to happen instead of just verifying th or uh, comparison things. Noted. Noted. Uh, Topher, no. It will return either true or false, but you need to tell has own property which to check for. Aha! Like name and other such things. I'm just curious. So wait, uh, good tip, Goss. Um, damn, 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 go salmon. Yes, I I agree. I agree. Um, okay. So, hold the phone. It's not actually there. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. We're coming up to it. I'm just drawing a blank on what exactly it was. We had something that was very similar to all this last night that we were dealing with. Bracket notation. If we even dealt with the has own property. Why am I forgetting? Probably because it's 127 at night, but... Yes, happy coder and all that. We're going to find it. We're going to find it. Lookup value. This is kind of similar. So we had the lookup value yesterday. Lookup and value. Phone stuff. God, we're so close. Has own property. Yes. Good, good. Okay, so... What was I doing with house on property? Check prop. So here, if my object dot has own property, check prop, return my object, check prop. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. So from from there, we need to do um, instead of my object, it would be contacts. So contacts I has own property. That's totally cool. And then we would do uh, basically just parentheses uh, prop, right? Right? Hopefully. Fingers crossed. If it were a cold day in hell, perhaps. Prop. At least I think. So let's get rid of this. It wasn't that that I wanted to put in bracket notation. It was prop that I wanted to put in bracket notation. Somewhat. I'm pretty sure I'm still wrong. But my object check prop return. So if that flies in curly braces, then we want to return that, which would be contacts. Uh, prop. So we are returning 
contacts I prop. <sighs> I think I could be I'm I'm 32% sure I'm wrong or I've messed something up elsewhere. But I think that is definitely a step in the right direction. It's better than what I had. I know that much. It's better than what I had. Take out your prop equals out. Oh, oh, right, right. Oh, because that's kind of redundant. That's what the dot has own property is for. It's already checking that. So if that's true, then that will fly. Hey, pizza, coding, brownie, and points... And we got three out of the five. That's kind of cool. But there should be more. Uh, if it doesn't return anything, so there, there's the fail safe. If that falls apart, then we should have no such property. So else, else. No. Oh, we need both. No such contact for, what would that be? God, how would I put those two? If first name, if it doesn't have first name, and it's true, do this, else... It's how we're stacking them. One is tied to the first if statement. The other else is tied to the second if statement. Good, good eye, good eye. So it's how we end up coding this nightmare. This if lives within the first if statement. Now I'm just trying to visualize how the hell I break it down. Um, everything's indented. So that means if I want an external one, I need to have it here. Because if this else... <sighs> okay. Oh my god. Who invited this guy? It was... No one should have given me the keys to drive this thing. What a terrible decision. Um, inside will be return no such property for the prop fiasco. Return no such property. Otherwise, it will be returning no such contact for the first name, which will actually be down below. Copy... Um, something seems off. It just looks ugly. Uh, V-Snake, try better indentation. I, I agree. Let's indent the, cr you know what, you're, you're right. Uh, it's the, we go from, I think, four spaces to two, and I think that's what's throwing me off, because it's confusing me as well. If curly is way better. Can't do it in chat. I, I I believe. I believe you. Tab. Tab. You know what? Um, Z. Z. Let's do all of this forward. One. One, two, three. And then all of this can go forward one as well. That seems weird, right? Did I make things worse? I've been known to make things worse. Let's try that on for size. Damn, and now I lost the top three, but I gained the bottom two? What the f- Death. Oh, I see what you mean, V Snake. Okay. Um 
the the if statement and then the punctuation, then the code, then the closing braces. See, I actually I was doing that at Code Academy, which was the first 150 days of this nightmarish journey. But for the last, I don't know, however many days we've been here at Free Code Camp, chipping away at stuff, they've been having things formatted like this. So I've just been trying to emulate, mimic, sort of monkey see, monkey do um, for their examples in, in their site and their environment for their stuff, if that's a thing. See, uh, well, th that's another one. But anyways, I my example or activity as well but that's that was that's what was going on i still don't actually really have a preference but um i'm not too sure so that's a thing anywho uh but that's all that's why i've got everything kind of scrunched together not a lot of breathing room um topher no such contact return statement would go after the for loop did I put it after the for loop? I thought it was tied to the other end of the if. If that makes any sense. I was trying to give this return statement to this if. And I figured this if statement would be tied to this return. I think the moral of the story is I'm awful. Um do to do to do okay, so if uh curly brace on the same line is hard to read. I put my bracket uh Topher, I put my brackets on the same line. I think that it's a matter of preference. I find using a line for one bracket is wasteful. Yeah, I guess, but I think it will help them. Not really a waste if it helps read better faster. Uh it's not tied to the if okay. So it's not tied to the if. Otherwise it will return after the first name does not match. It is not tied to the if. Otherwise, it will return after the first name doesn't match. See, and I'm, I'm trying to do, because they do say if the first name doesn't correspond to any contacts, It should return no such contacts. So where would I put this guy? Let's space it out a little. If blank, blank, blank. Don't mind me. We're just going to space out all this noise. And I know that's definitely not helpful at all, but just in the meantime... Okay, so I've got my for loop, which starts here. I've got my function, which starts here, opens, and I think this one actually closes the function down below this line. This, I think, is tied to the for loop that I have, and I think this is tied to the if statement. So for bi contacts this dude inside there inside the for loop we've got our if statement which opens and it's checking for the first name if it has a first name it will look for the property and if it doesn't have that property it should return something So I've got one opening for the four, one opening for the if, another opening for the if here, and a closing for the if, which is technically here because this closing belongs to the else. I feel like everything checks out. Yeah, because this one belongs to that first if statement and then else. So why is my math off for lack of a better 
here on this internal one for the prop, I can see if this, I get that, it will return this if it's true. Else, it, it will return no such property for the prop. So why isn't it returning? Well, I mean, I guess it is returning because we've got a green check mark. Is it the syntax? Is it just how it's laid out in the JavaScript? The fact that I have it so far down, did I need to break them up instead of if, if, else, else? Do I need to have it one after another? If, else, if, else? Um, find a line. Uh, Topher, I find using one line wasteful. Okay, yeah, I guess better. Uh, not really wasteful if it helps him read better, faster. Not tied to the if, otherwise it will return after the first name does not match. Maybe better for you, but not everyone. And uh, that's why it's preference. Uh, RLA666. In JavaScript, you should always put the curly brace on the same line as the if, return, or etc. Because of automatic semicolon insertion. Good handy tip. Um, okay. Topher, auto semicolon insertion would not apply here after if though, because the compiler should know that a semicolon doesn't come after an if state. Oh, oh, it's the issue that they're, okay, 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 gotcha. I see, wait, I think, I think. So after this if, there should be uh, stuff. No such contact should be outside the for. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I get it. I get it. Topher, you're right. I get it. The caps helped. If, any was, if anyone was wondering if the caps were needed or not, the caps were needed. The caps were needed. <sighs> After the for loop. I didn't get it. You know this, Topher, out of everyone. It's it's one forty one a.m. in the morning. We've gone over this before. It's like trying to guide a cat via smoke signals. It's just everything is over my head. Oh, Topher, you're a trooper. E everyone really trying to assist is just spectacular. I do not deserve the help. You are all way too kind. And, and probably more committed than I am. Oh, let's do this. Let's get rid of this. It should not be within the for loop. Just a highlight for future people who are confused. My issue is that I have the returning no such contact inside of the for loops parenthesis stuff. I will remove said thing. Let's get rid of this. Cut. Bad Steven. Bad Steven. Typical. Typical. Oh, all right. So let's do this. Let's let's shove this really right around here. But we can actually get rid of this guy because it can share that. That's what we're looking for. <sighs> so frustrated. You said it, Topher. Yeah. My God. All right. Uh, unexpected end of input. Don't mind that. That's just more of a, a syntax thing. Hold on. Hold on. So the, the for loop. Oh, wait, I, I missed more stuff. Uh, not part of the else. Just do return no such contact after the for loop. Okay, ditch the else. Ditch the else statement. No such. Returning no such. Okay, things are loading. Uh, you deleted one of the necessary ones that close out the outer block. I did, didn't I? That was my fault. And now which one did I get rid of? I had the function one. Uh, the opening function or the closing function curly brace is down here. We have our opening four. 
which very well may be, I believe it's this one. This guy. So that's our opening for loop. Oh no, and it goes after the for loop, which means maybe that's, no, that threw off something. Does this go down even further? Cut. It goes outside the for loop. I keep, I'm trying to end it. It's this one. It's, it's me and their site. This is the end of the function. But because we start with our for loop, I keep trying to cram a curly brace below this guy. But we don't need a curly brace below. We've already got the one down here. It's just a big hot mess. It's all awful. It's, everything's terrible. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Ta-da! Son of a... We're gonna fix the indentation, because that was awful. Okay. Yeah, so, so, uh, yes. Finally, I realized. Thank you, Topher. The just return no such contact after the for loop, because we're checking if. That's fine, there's the if else in here, but it's not, the else isn't needed afterwards for this guy, for the contact. Only for the property. The function closes down here, the for loop closes above. We're gonna work on our, our indentation. Uh, let's do one and we're going to do two, 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 else, return, else. There's that guy and this guy and return. Finally, my God. About freaking time. There's still kind of excessive stuff going on here. I know it could be written far more pretty and concise, but uh, it's fitting for how terrible I am. So, checkmate. That was brutal. Painful, even, is far more accurate. Okay. Dear God. Uh, let's see. What Did we miss any additional uh, comments? V-Snake. Yeah, I agree. V-Snake. Just wild confusion and concern. Uh, Ford is not getting an else. Uh, RLA666, you deleted necessary closing curly brace that closes the outer of the if block. Uh, do you need the else after the first name stuff? Uh, I think I deleted that. Motor? Mo mo motor? Motor? One of those? Um, Topher, fix your indentation. You will find your problem. Or up. RLA66, now it's okay, but indentation is confusing indeed. Couldn't agree more. You could do if first name, contact I first name, return contacts.prop return, no such property. Uh, wouldn't that throw an error if prop didn't exist in an object where the first name does not match? Quite possibly, but at least we fixed the indentation thing and we got the green check mark. Uh, contacts I prop could be undefined. That is, that is very true. We are so, so close, yet so far away. All we have to do is, is make it through random. I'm trying to figure out, do we push through, through regular expressions and random numbers? I think so. Let's just do it, right? I mean, ugh, super death. We're going to push. We're going to push through because we can. Why not? 
generate random number fractions with JavaScript. Random number fraction, uh, random numbers are useful for creating random behavior. JavaScript has a math.random function that generates a random decimal number between zero inclusive and not quite up to one exclusive. Thus, math.random can return a zero, but never quite return a one. Note, like storing values with the equal operator, let's click on that. Storing values with the equal operator, yeah, good, good, yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, all functions will be resolved before the return executes, so we can return the value of math.random function. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, everything to the right of the equal sign gets dealt with before it does anything on the left side. Um, do, 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 do. Instructions. Change the random fraction to return a random number instead of returning zero. Function random fraction. Only change the code below this line. Return zero. Only change the code above this line. All right, here we go. So, change the random fraction to return a number instead of returning zero. Let's do this. Let's do this. Math dot random. I think we can live with that. Ta-da! We knew you could do it. Oh, clearly, they didn't take part in the last activity where I totally struggled with indenting. So, yeah, but we survived yet another one. Generate random whole numbers with JavaScript. It's great that we can generate random decimal numbers, but it's even more useful if we use it to generate random whole numbers. One, use math.random to generate a random decimal. Multiply that random decimal by 20 and use another function, math.floor, to round the number down to the nearest whole number. Remember that math.random can never quite return a 1, and because we're rounding down, it's impossible to actually get 20. This technique will give us whole numbers between 0 and 19. Putting everything together, this is what our code looks like math.floor, math.random, times 20, and technically math.random times 20 inside of math floor. We're calling math.random, multiplying the result by 20, then passing the value to math.floor function to round the value down to the nearest whole number. Instructions. Use this technique to generate and return a random whole number between 0 and 9. Okay, okay, so if we aren't doing between 0 and 9, that means we're going to end up with 10 somewhere. Variable, random number, between 0 and 19, math.floor, math.random times 20. Function, random whole number, only change the code below this line, math.random times 10, but this goes inside math.floor parentheses, and closing parentheses. Let's roll with that. Run test. Boom. We did it. Down the rabbit hole we go. Good, good times. Okay, we're alive. We're alive. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, uh, what's going down? Uh, didn't check for that. I think has own property checks that. What challenge was it? Uh, I don't think it was a challenge. Just part of the learn JavaScript basic section uh it was profile lookup uh yeah map it was i mean it is part of the basic javascript section and it's towards the very end of the basic javascript stuff and it was profile lookup was the specific activity but it was just like one of these generate a random number check things <clears throat> it wasn't like an actual project uh so yeah Good, good times. Um, what are we looking for? Something about something. Modder profile lookup. Yeah, that one. Uh, RLA666. Can we be sure that those numbers are truly random? I don't know. I don't know how the random... Is that a thing? 
do we know how they set up the random the math.floor thing? I'm just trusting in whoever set up the math.random. What if it's not random? I I don't know. I'm not we'll never know. At least I'll never know. At least not tonight. We can find out. Uh live to create. Hi. Hello to you there. Live to create. Welcome. Welcome to uh this tragic journey here here at BDX Inc. Indulge in the fun if you dare. Uh speaking of daring to continue, we are so close to the end. Five more. Technically four after this guy. Let's do this. And then we finally get to do regular expressions. We're so close. So close. Regular expressions will be essential to our success at Code Wars. Because Code Wars has proven to be brutal the last couple attempts. So let's do this. Generate random whole numbers within a range. Instead of generating a random number between 0 and a given number like we did before, we can generate a random number that falls within a range of two specific numbers. To do this, we'll define a minimum number, min, and a maximum number, max. Here's the formula we'll use. Take a moment to read it and try to understand what this code is doing. So math.floor, math.random times min max plus one plus min. So let's look at it from an exploded view, imploded view. We're going to go from the inside out. Max minus min plus one. So whatever is happening here, tag a one on top of it. So all of that fun is happening. We are multiplying math.random times all of this noise and math.floor is containing all of that so multiplying all of that that nonsense and then once we've got that dealt with we are adding the min so that's roughly what's happening doesn't sound fun instructions Create a function called random. Uh, live to create. What's the plan? The frequently asked questions is empty. Oh, yeah. Uh, side note, I need to update the, the frequently asked questions. Not actually frequently asked questions. It's eventually going to end up as uh, freaking awesome quotes, but we'll get there. We're, we're slow to set that up. But if it were to have information... I'm struggling to learn how to code for the last 205 days, and there's 160 more days to go. Started at Code Academy. This is not going to turn into some mega tangent because we don't have the time for it. But we did every all the free content that Code Academy had to offer. Um, I'm not sure if I would recommend to anyone else, but that's what I did. Seemed like a good place to start. Then we made our way to Code Wars. Uh, struggled there a lot, and then we needed to, we've been chipping away at Kata's here and there. Code Wars is awesome, by the way. Uh, and then from Code Wars, we ended up at Free Code Camp, where we've been slowly but surely chipping away at all of the fun stuff Free Code Camp has to offer. And uh, from here, we'll probably end up Back at Code Wars, and also tag on Treehouse, is it? But yeah, so it's just been a painful, brutal, and confusing journey. And uh, yeah, I wanted to stream games on Twitch. My computer sucks, so I ended up needing to stream coding. Ta-da! Yeah, good times. Uh, do you stream every day? Code every day? How does it work? Uh, how does the schedule work? Um, <laughs> I try to stream every day at 11 a.m.-ish, um, but that rarely happens. As you can, well, I don't know where you are on the planet, but right now I'm on the, the west coast of the U.S., so in California, and it's currently 1.58 a.m. Hey there, little kitty. What are you doing? Yeah, you're covered in fur. Look at you. You and your tiny toes. What are you doing? Try not to step on anything. That would be super awesome. You want scratches? Just don't right-click and back out. That would be greatly appreciated. Got your tail. This tail belongs to a cat. Um, 
So, with that said, what will you- No, no, don't knock over the webcam. Little kitty, princess, will you grab- grab your napping spot, not on the keyboard. Oh my god, princess, we're so close to the end. Sorry, uh, the schedule is- No, 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 just chill. Look, I cleaned the desk, it's all clean, it's available for you to nap. Sit, boo-boo, sit. Good cat. Um, okay, she is the destroyer of worlds. I've been having to learn how to deal with her while streaming every day. The, the, uh, the schedule doesn't really exist. Uh, I'm a master of procrastination, so I try to stream in the middle of the day, but I usually, you just shook your mouth and you got slime on my hand. Ugh. You're disgusting. For a lady... You have terrible manners. I swear to God, cat, just pick. Can you go explore the bed? We have a whole bed for you to just lounge about on. Thank you, princess. Thank you. Holy hell. So, yeah, what are we doing? She's terribly distracting. Something about random numbers. Brutal. We've learning how to code. Uh, I've only coded... Over the last 205 days, all of the coding that I've learned to do has been streamed. I haven't done any learning to code offline, like off stream. So it's all, it's been a weird amalgam. I don't know how it happened. It just all fell into this strange journey. We'll call it an abomination for lack of a better phrase, but uh, yeah, it's been brutal. How have you managed to code slash stream every day consecutively, or do you have days off? I've been doing it late at night, and it just, I end up doing, I end up starting the stream, like, minutes before midnight. So even though today is now Tuesday, July 25th at 2.01 a.m., which, God, we need to go to sleep soon, uh, this is day 205, so this is actually Monday's stream, because I started at 11.57, and because I'm a firm believer in procrastination, this counts as yesterday's stream, even though 98.57% of it is happening today. Uh, but hopefully, we're, we're hopeful that tomorrow I'll wake up and start streaming at 11 a.m., but Topher can assure you that's not going to happen basically ever. <clears throat> so yeah, good, good times. Uh, just a lot of commitment, and it's like the main thing. I, I really dove into, well, I, I set up all of this WordPress site and a Twitch page for this BDX Inc. nonsense crap. Actually, let's not go with that one. Let's go with, where's the better one? I don't know. I just dove into the, the Twitch stream stuff hard. It just happened. I say it just happened. It just It didn't just happen. Uh, what would happen? This one. The About Me link. See? The Frequently Asked Questions link doesn't work, but the About Me works. It's got a couple things. I don't know. I just I made it super... I tried to make it super official in case it ever turned into something more. Because I got, I got my Elgato HD 60S capture card, and I was like, I'm going to set up all this stuff for BDX Inc., my own little thing, and stream. And then when I, when I set all this stuff and I was about to stream and tried to use the capture card, I realized my computer is too old and doesn't work. So I was like, fuck, I need to stream something daily just to get in the habit of streaming daily. Uh, so I thought, hey, what can I do every single day I can do? I want to learn how to code. And that's something that I can do every day that my computer can handle. Because me highlighting code and reading to reading into the abyss of the internet, that's that's about all my computer can handle. So yeah. Topher, <laughs> that has never happened, right? Oh my god. I mean, there's probably like maybe six days where I've streamed before noon. It's not good. It's not a good track record. Like, 90% of the streams is me rushing to start the stream by, like, 11.56, you know, at night, before the stroke of midnight. I'm basically Cinderella every single day. 
not a great example, but that's me. I'll take it. Um, oh my god, your claws. Why? Uh, how long do you usually stream for? Usually? I No, no, no. You're stepping on the keyboard, princess. Just, just go away. Usually I end up streaming for... It depends on how long the activities are and how much progress I'm trying to make. Code Academy, their activities would take anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half for a long one. Code Wars should take like 5 to 10 minutes, but Code Wars is always like an hour and a half to two hours because I just fail at Code Wars hard. Um, so I've uh, here at Free Code Camp, though, I've noticed the streams are anywhere from about... It's nice because some of the activities are really short, like setting up math.ram. I mean, I can do like three of these in like 15 minutes, and I can do like a 20-minute stream. So the the stream duration definitely changes, but tonight I tried to make a larger push, if you will. I didn't know profile lookup was going to be such a bitch. When I got to it, I knew I was going to be confused. Typical. Wasn't even difficult. I just knew that I was going to be confused. Um, and that fell apart. Fortunately, the community came together and uh, came to to uh, save the day and assist, which is greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, so yeah, it's we're trying to make we're trying to finish uh, the basic JavaScript section. So when we go to make a larger push, it usually takes an hour and a half, two hours. I think the longest stream I've had is like three and a half. But uh, yeah good times anywho what's happening oh well i okay i uh jumpy stick that's cool you've got i'm assuming that's like an english translation meow in real life yeah the the cat she's the destroyer of worlds don't let her cuteness deceive you hey look at you god you're cute um yeah, so uh, thank you for the hosting and for 17 viewers. Shocking. Well, at that time, have you managed to code stream every day? Yeah, we've dealt with that. Never happens. How long? Okay. Uh, jumpy Stick. Yo, this story is amazing. Love seeing programming streams. I'm glad you're getting a lot of learning out of it. Motor, I was thinking like this. Paste bin on the profile thing. Let's click the out of that. Yeah, yeah. So another weird thing is as far as just making the stream work, uh, the streaming games on Twitch falling apart. My setup, as you can tell, there's a lot of mic, mic in the face. Hashtag mic life, right? Um, yeah, we're just making do with what we have. Earlier, me and Topher were discussing potential future computer things that I might invest in. Uh, so I've got limited space, limited time, super late at night, um, sharing a room, got my fiance super late at night so we just there's a lot going on but i'm just determined to make this fly so it just happens to be coding themed for the meantime but yeah ah anyways twitch chat i've got i've got chat on my phone that's my my second screen because i've only got one monitor most people who stream have two monitors but not not Steven. Not me. We are making it work. Anywho. Good times. We're so close. Let's finish the random nonsense and land this bird. We've got the four sets of regular expression activities, and we are done with this section. Go time. So math.floor, math.random times max minus min plus one plus min. So instructions create a function called random range that takes range, my min and my max, and returns a random number that's greater than or equal to my min and is less than or equal to my max inclusive. I'm going to, let's see, example. Function, our random range, our min, our max, return dot math floor, math dot random, our max, minus our min. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the phone. Ah, everything has our in front of it. So we're setting up with random and my. 
So we're going to have max minus min plus 1 times math.random times math.floor plus our min. Our random range will be 1 through 9. So here we are going to set up function random only change code below this line return and change this line change these values blah 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 all right here we go here we go let's do this return we're going to work from the inside out fingers crossed <laughs> Create a function called random range. That takes a range, my min and my max. We've got random range, uh, random range, my min, my max. And returns a random number that's greater than or equal to my min and is less than or equal to my max inclusive. Let's go ahead and land this bird. V Snake, 2000, see ya. Good times. Uh, Topher, I'd love to stick around to watch you land this bird, but I have to go to work in four hours. Dear God, haven't slept since yesterday. I should get a couple hours of sleep before hitting the reset button on this nightmare. Good night, Steve, in the chat. Topher, thank you so much for all the hints, tips, guidance. Uh, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. Uh, yeah, good times. Topher, you're a good egg. Uh, also, yeah. go. Tiny cat. You gotta move. Okay. Here we go. No, 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 princess. Okay, don't mind me. I'm gonna she's adorable but we're just gonna we're gonna deal with the cat situation there's there's a kitty crisis happening and before i finish this i'm just gonna move her because she's just way too much fun don't mind me don't mind me think amongst yourselves kitty crisis Okay, kitty crisis dealt with. Oh, brutal. Uh, live to create, have to sleep too, but this is awesome. Best of luck. No problem, not to worry. Thank you for hanging out with us. Live to create is greatly, greatly appreciated. Okay, so we are all set. We've got stuff here. We are returning math dot so forth and such and such math no random range my min my max my min my max returns a random number so that's going to be down here math.random that's greater than or equal to my min and is less than or equal to my max inclusive so that's going to be this it's that same thing, but our version of it. I think. God, I hope so. So math.floor. Math dot random. Hmm. 
max times my min, no, my max my max minus my min, yeah, plus one, no, yes, plus, minus, plus. Plus one followed by plus our min, my min, my min. I think that's relatively okay. Run test, boom. Legend, wait for it, dairy, in your face, free code camp, in your face. Oh, finally, we have made it to regular expressions. I hope regular expressions aren't painful. I hope it's quick and fairly straightforward, like the random numbers were. Profile lookup was a night. Oh my god, we can... We can sense her presence. Little kitty is back. Don't you jump up on the desk. You you furry abomination. Just stay on the desk. No, 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 no. Princess, I love you. But you're gonna have to chill somewhere else. I know you love the scratches. But I'm trying to learn regular expressions. It's been 205 days and we haven't learned regular expressions. We have the opportunity to learn it now. Do you comprendo? Yes? No? Okay, I'm going to give you like 12 seconds of scratching and then you're going to have to leave, okay? We're going to do it. Starting now. No, no. God, you're just awful. Okay, that was like 12-ish seconds. You're, you're rolling. Yeah, good. You're on the far side of the desk. Awesome. Hey, Cruff. <laughs> Lots of fur. Oh my god, what are you typing? Little, that is little kitty. Just type, no, no, no. Oh my god, just go on the bed, go on the bed. Sorry for the cat cry. Oh my god. That's your face, little one. I'm sorry. <sighs> well, it was going good. Corrupt file. Thank you for asking. We've made an interesting amount of progress. Oh, and it still keeps it. Look at that. We're almost done solving the basic JavaScript, or uh, finishing the basic JavaScript section here at Free Code Camp. We've made it through loops, something else, uh, loops, random numbers, and now we are trying to tackle regular expressions. It's been an uphill battle today. Day 205 has been long, arduous, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. There there aren't a lot of a lot of good ones, good adjectives to to describe it, but it's been going nonetheless. Sifting through text with regular expressions. Corrupt five. Uh, I've wondered for a while now. You always have your cat around. Is that your wife in the background as well? Soon to be wife, fiance in the meantime. Um, but yes, yeah, that is that is the missus. That is that is her. She's she's usually either on her phone or playing Breath of the Wild or usually playing Sims a lot uh, or managing the cat. So, but she the cat is just rampant this evening. Usually she sleeps. Usually she gets excited and then she'd like no no. God, you're so furry, tiny cat. Thank God you're cute because you are unbelievably annoying. Um, cat is back. I'm surprised she lets you code this late. So am I, and so is the rest of the world and everyone else who stumbles through this stream. She is, she is definitely the better half. So, 
Uh, it's an interesting setup. Her schedule, my schedule, we just kind of make it work. All right, uh, corrupt file. My girlfriend always teases me for being up late when I visit her at her place. Being up at, being up late is the only time to do anything. The rest of the planet is awake during the day. Daytime is awful because other humans are awake. F that noise, right? Yeah. I mean, good times. Crop file 105. Won't distract you. Get back to coding, right? Right? Not to worry. Not to worry. Crop file. We we need the, the human interaction despite the distractions. It's the only thing that ties us to the real world. Uh, what are we doing? Something about sifting through text with regular expressions. Dear God. How long have we been streaming for? This has been a slightly... Two hours and twenty minutes. Usually we'd... Oh my God, little kitty's like eating amiibos or something. She's found our amiibo stash for Breath of the Wild. She's trying to kill them in the darkness. She's so curious, it's awful. Focus! <sighs> Sift through the text with regular expressions. Finally, day 205, continuing on. Let's do this. Regular expressions are used to find certain words or patterns inside of strings. For example, if you wanted to find the word the in the string, the dog chase the cat, we could use the following regular expression. The G-I. Oh, that's really easy to use. Let's break this down a bit. Slash. This is the start of the regular expression. The is the pattern we want to mash. Slash is the end of the regular expression. And G means global, which causes the pattern to return all matches in the string, not just the first one. I means that we want to ignore the case, uppercase or lowercase, when searching for the pattern. Is that all that was needed to explain regular expressions? Oh my god. No, there's got to be more. There's still four more e expressions. However, this little bit of, this little bit of information would have made Code Wars, at least the beginning stuff, so much easier. My god. Ugh. Anywho, instructions. Select all the occurrences of the word and in test string. You can do this by replacing the period part of the regular expression with the word and. Variable test string. Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage designed the first computer and the software that would run on it. Example, expression to get the software. Software, global, insensitive, ignore, one of those, ignore, global and ignore. Software account, uh, test string dot match, expression to get software dot length, only change could blow this line. You're changing the dot for an and, and they're doing it, variable expression equals slash and slash gi change this line only change above this code counts the matches of expressions in the test string variable and count test string match okay cool and let's do this run it we're gonna pump you up so there's two ands in there see down here two well there's a two down there uh let's run that way cool success Good, good. All right. What happened to the software? Oh, for Babbage and so forth? Is Tiny Cat... Don't mind me. Tiny Cat is... is. Can we see... Yeah, do you... Okay, yes, yes. Look at that, look at that. Do, you... do we all see Tiny Cat in the background? Pacing? Doing cat things. Look at her. Look at her. Pouncing around on the hunt. It's like living with Jaws, but she's much smaller, but far, far deadlier because she's got all her tiny claws. 
I can sense her in the dark in the darkness. Stalking me. It's not good. Uh anyhow, yeah, I'm not too sure what happened to there. Is that like a trivia question? I should probably Google it, but I'm sure it turned into something great or or nothing at all. I can't imagine it ended up being nothing at all. Uh, find numbers with regular expressions. We can use special selectors in regular expressions to select a particular type of value. One such selector is the digital selector slash D, which is used to retrieve, uh, not digital, the digit selector slash D, which is used to retrieve one digit. Example, numbers 0 through 9 in a string. In JavaScript, it's used like this. Slash D slash G. Okay. Appending a plus sign after the selector, example, D plus, allows this regular <laughs> expression to match one or more digits. Bless you. The trailing G is short for global, which, I'll, okay, well, wait, what's the plus sign actually doing? Appending a plus sign after the selector allows this regular expression to match one or more digits. Gotcha, gotcha. The trailing G, hey, little cat, no. She eats a lot of plastic. I know that's out of context. We're talking about little kitty, of course. But I don't know what she just finds. Anything and everything that's plastic. She There was a bag of candy up there. And she was munching away on the plastic. There's another plastic wrapper on the desk. And she's chewing away on that. So we always have to... Oh, she's finally getting sleepy. No one move. Can we see that? Can we see that? That's her head. I think we finally can actually make progress without her interrupting us. Thank God. It's been like 45 minutes of tiny cat running around. Okay. Uh, corrupt file. It's my bedtime. Try to hit up your stream tomorrow a little earlier. No worries. Good night to you. Good luck tonight. Oh, I finally got my GitHub up and working. I will set up a code pen too now that I'm working on a lot of front end dev stuff. That's awesome to hear, corrupt file. Way to go. Glad to hear there's progress on all fronts. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night to you, sir. All right. Good, good. Here we are. Three down. One down. Three to go. We're on the current one. These are proving to be mostly easy. And little kitty snapping. Let's see how quickly we can actually tackle these. Find numbers with regular expressions. We can use the special selectors and regular expressions to select particular type of value. Okay, one such selector, yes, the D thing slash D. Appending a plus sign after the selector, D plus, allows this regular expression to match one or more digits. The trailing G is short for global, which allows regular expressions to find all matches rather than stop the first match. Instructions, use the slash D selector. Oh, it's not the first, I thought it was like the little, like, kind of triangular symbol. No, it's not. It's the slash D. So it's slash D plus, it's these three that are friends. Not those guys. Yeah, those two? Uh-uh, they're traveling separately. Yeah, this is like when another family walks between you and whoever else you're traveling with and just a whole whole herd of them go by and you you and the others have to split to make way for for said large group um good good so use the slash d selector not d plus but just slash d selector to select the number of numbers in the string allowing for pos for the possibility of one or more digits wait a second for the possibility of one or more, we'd need the plus. Oh, look at this. They already included the plus for us. All we have to do is the slash D. Slash D. Testing, there are three cats but four dogs. We're looking for numbers. The digital count, test string dot match expression dot length, variable digital count 
test string match expression dot length. Run test. Even Honey Badger cares. Oh, we're so close. The second to last one. Finding white space with regular expressions. We can also use regular expression selectors like the slash s to find white space in a string. The white space characters are double quote space, so empty space, slash r, the carriage return, and slash n, which is new line, slash t for tab, and the f for the form feed. The white space regular expression looks like this. It's simply slash s plus, similar to the D, but with an S. Use the slash s to select all white space characters in the sentence string. How many spaces are there in the sentence? Well, let's find out with slash s plus space count test string dot match expression dot length. We'll run it. One loop to rule them all. And we will now have the last activity under our belt. Basic JavaScript stuff will be conquered and finished here at Free Code Camp. Oh, thank God. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Invert regular expression matches with JavaScript. You can invert any match by using the uppercase version of the regular expression selector. For example, slash s will match any white space in slash S will match anything that isn't white space. Oh, that's kind of cool. So I take slash capital D would look for anything and everything that isn't a number. So instructions use slash capital S to count the number of non-white space characters in test string. Look at that. Look at this. Slash capital S. Eh, kind of cool. Run test? No, they're pissed. We did it wrong. Why is it on the last one it always falls apart? No plus. No plus, just S. Ta-da! There we go. Don't hurt him here. Oh my god. Tiny cat's doing stuff. Don't mind me. Hold on. Alright. Let me deal with... I think that's all sorts. Oh, we're moving the mic. We're moving the mic. All right, we are closing out. We finally did it. We are all done. We lived. We survived. Let's shimmy the mic back to right where it needed to be, and we will power this down. There we go. Oh, that is just... Everything is awful. Something about something relatively should be around there. Hopefully. Dear God. Oh, we did it. We survived. Day 205 comes to an end. Thank you again for anyone and everyone who stopped by. Look at this. We have finished basic JavaScript. 10-hour course is down. Tomorrow, we will be diving into object-oriented and functional programming. It says that's only two hours. Who knows if we'll finish that whole section. We may only do half. But in the meantime, we're backing out. So we have our profile. 218 items currently completed here at Free Code Camp. Let's jump out of Free Code Camp over to OBS. Thank you again to anyone and everyone who came to view the stream, uh, whether it was to give tips, just hang out, comment, chat, whatever it was. Any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. A big thanks to who all commented. Topher Gates, VSnake2000, Ghost Salmon, um, RLA666, Motor with a zero, uh, Motor, one of those, uh, live, uh, Live to Create, Jumpy Stick, and, 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 uh, Q Legends, and Corrupt File 105. 
thank you all for hanging out with us. And again, if anyone else accidentally stumbled in here, uh, once more, any and all views are greatly, greatly appreciated. Way cool. We are now in OBS. The adventure continues tomorrow with day 206 of the year of streaming and learning to code. But in the meantime, we are stopping the stream. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.